Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and welcome back to the next uh, episode of our uh, rear trailing arm replacement on the uh, on the little Mini Cooper. Um, if you watched the last episode, you'll have seen us replace the bearings and the front bush. Uh, if you haven't seen that, then I'll leave a, a cue card up in the top corner now so you can go and check it out, all the links in the description. Okay, now, um, obviously what we need to do is, in order to fit this, is remove the old one. What we'll, uh, what we'll need to do first though is um, remove the braking system, so the caliper, the disc and all that sort of stuff. Um, remove the drop link uh, for the anti-roll bar um, and then we'll be in a position to loosen all the bolts that hold the arm uh, onto the chassis. Um, so yeah, so where, where we'll begin first is obviously with removing the brakes. Okay then, so uh, to get the brakes off, what we need to do is obviously remove the disc and the caliper um, and they're held on with a couple of bolts. Um, on the disc here, we have a T50 uh, torque bolt. Um, these can be a bit of a pain, so make sure you are using a T50, not a T45 or something that's a different size. And just crack it off. Yeah, they can be a bit tight. Sometimes they, uh, they do like to strip, it's not unusual. go that's that one okay now what we'll do next is um, the caliper now the caliper is held onto the carrier with the two slide bolts those two slide bolts are seven mil and they are behind these little these little caps here so if I take them off and there's a seven mil and then just ease them off there's one and then the next one is under here and the same again and now we'll pull them all the way out we've got everything off that we need to uh, in order to remove the caliper and the disc so what i need to do now is just let the handbrake off the car um, and then that will free the uh, free the caliper off the disc and then we should be able to we should be able to just get it off Okay, so the handbrake is off and we can spin the disc. Last thing we need to do is just pop, just pop the spring clip off. And there we are, as you can see now, the caliper is moving independently of the carrier. Let me just double check that bolt, make sure it is all the way out. I think it is out, it's just it won't come out. It won't come out of its little housing. I think, I think we are there. Yeah, it's definitely, it is definitely out. I just can't, I can't get my fingers on it to pull it out, but it's, it's, uh, yeah, it's definitely out. Right. Okay, this may need a little bit of persuasion, but no, it looks like it's coming okay. Come on. that is the caliper removed and as you can see on the back here we've actually got loads of meat left on these pads um, the disc itself doesn't look too clever it's quite rusty now I will be replacing the discs and the pads on this car uh, but obviously just not in this video that is a video for later okay so now that I've got the caliper off what I'll do is just pop a bungee through it and just hold it up out of the way so it's not putting any strain on the hose okay so now we can take the take the pads off the rear one's a little bit rear one's a little bit tight on there but we'll uh, we'll get that off um yeah it's a little bit a little bit tight mine just need a little bit of a little bit of persuasion Thank you. 
A little bit of persuasion required, I think. And there we are. Yeah, that was that was quite rusted on there, to be put, to be honest. Okay, so there we are now. What we can do is we can take the caliper carrier off and that is held on with two bolts on the inside of the uh, on the inside of the steel arm okay what i want to do is obviously i want to remove the brake carrier now the brake carrier is held in with uh, two large um, bolts which have 30 mil heads on on the inside of the arm um, the, the actual disc itself will maneuver out without removing that there just like just like so um, and here you can see where the bolts come through now they are very corroded and so these may put up a bit of a challenge, but we'll we'll give it a go. And they've conveniently left some holes on the on the steel pressings for you to get the for you to get your um, tools into. And there we go. There's one. They're very, very tight. And two. There we go. There's the second one. Yeah, they're uh, they're really quite rusty. They're not they're not coming out too freely at all. the other. Just recover that bolt. Um, if I, some, it's quite easy to drop these to be fair because there's not a lot of room to be able to grab them. Um, what I'll do is get that on there. There we go, there it is. Okay. <clears throat> so, there is the uh, the brake caliper carrier. I'll pop those bolts back into there. Now this is obviously is in dire need of a really good clean because it's absolutely bogging. Nothing that a wire will, uh, a wire uh, a wire brush or a wire wheel won't be able to fix though. So yeah, but that's for later. Okay, so here we are. Now we've got the um, now we've got the brakes off. You can see what we're uh, we're looking at. Obviously, this is the the wheel bearing uh, that we replaced on the other arm. You can see here we've got the top the top mount bolt and the bottom mount bolt there. The uh, the anti roll bar drop link um, obviously fitted to the anti roll bar at the end here, um, and then this shock absorber comes down and bolts in at the bottom just here. Uh, and then you've got three bolts holding the the um, training arm mount into the uh, onto the chassis. So yeah, we've got plenty to be getting on with. And I think what I'll do next is start here with the uh, anti roll bar drop link. I'll, I'll disconnect it at the top and leave the bottom actually just fit into the arm because uh, I don't really need to take it off. It's uh, it's not that it's not that necessary. So yeah, anti roll bar drop link next. Okay, so anti roll bar top mount in the uh, in the middle of it. There is a 5mm hex, which that fits into very, very nicely. The actual nut itself is a 16. So we'll pop our 16mm spanner on like so. Get our ratchet on there. I'm going to hold that nice and tight. And then what we need to do is try and crack this nut off. Now this is going to be a bit of a bugger. There we are, we got it. Yeah, it was a, it was quite tight. So now what I can do is undo it with my ratchet. Actually, I could put a bit of WD-40 on it to just help it along. That would probably would have helped, but sometimes you can find that it makes the tools slip just as much. Now 
now I think we're getting to the point where the actual, yeah, the, uh, I think the hex has actually started to round off in the inside. Yeah, look, you can see it's uh, putting up a fight. So what I may actually have to do, is just get my grinder out and just chop through it, um, which will uh, which will help. There are spanner flats on the back. I'm not sure what size they are. I think they're 16 or 17 as well. I'll, I'll give them a go. But yeah, well, do. I'll, I'll persevere with this nut, get it off, and then uh, I'll bring you back in for the next step. Okay, so now we uh, now we have the nut off the anti-roll bar drop link and that's been disconnected from the arm. What we need to do now is loosen off the three bolts that hold the front trailing arm mount to the chassis. Now up here there is one bolt. What you'll notice here is, is this plastic cover. They do give you like a little a little window so you can get into that bolt, um, which is quite handy. And there's another one up here where this little cutout is and the other one. Um, I'm not sure if it's too dark or not. Let me just turn the little light on up the top there you can see the other one and there's the there they are there's the three bolts now we need to do need to disconnect that abs sensor that blue plug just there um and like i said they do give you a little window to get into the bolts um up there which is nice however it's only held on with this little screw here and that 10 mil plaster nut uh, just here so what I'll do I'll pull that um, screw out take that platinum off pull this panel out so we've got complete access into this area here's the little cover that I was talking about there was um, these kind of uh, affairs and then there was a 10 mil little plastic nut which actually sheared off anyway um, as it goes now there was another one of these just there which was actually hidden by the uh, by the actual stand it was out of my eye shot so I couldn't see it but the other thing that um, caught me out and I didn't realize was there was um, this little screw here was was in there now as you can see the head of that screw is absolute toast <laughs> so that's not much use for uh, to man nor beast um, so it was a bit of a pig to get out, but um, obviously it came out. It goes into like a little plastic um, insert, which is in the chassis. Uh, but obviously, due to its position, it does get a lot of spray. Uh, and that's why that screw looks like it does. But yeah, so there's two of them. One uh, plastic nut at the top, and then that screw on the inside, and that's out. Now, um, we've got good access to the three bolts um, holding the, uh, the front of the trailing arm in that I pointed out a moment ago. They are 16 mil um 16 mil bolts i'm gonna use a 16 mil six-sided socket just to make sure that they don't round um so i'll get on with that th those three and um, then uh, after those three are out there's three more bolts that one that one and then that one here which is actually from the other side which is the bottom of the shock absorber once those three bolts are out that whole arm is off so uh yeah i'll um i'll get started with the the front three i'll get them out and then uh, i'll bring it back in and we'll get these other three off Okay, so under here, I've removed um, two of the bolts completely, and they are just here, these two, um, and the other one is loosened, but um, uh, not all the way out, I've just left it there just so it's holding it up. Um, under here, the other thing I need to do is disconnect the ABS sensor, and that cable is tie-wrapped to, uh, to the mount, so that will come out with it, so that's fine. Okay, so now that those three are done, what we can do is get to the other end of the arm and have a look at the uh, the other three bolts, the one at the bottom of the shock and the two on the arms. Okay, so that's those three done. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to loosen off the bolt at the bottom of the shock absorber and over the shock absorber they have these little plastic cups um, which just basically slot in over the bolt. The head of the bolt sits here um, and then this just pops into a little recess on the arm and then that hooks around it um, I'm not really sure why they bother with these because all that seems to do is just trap water which there sits against the head of the bolt and makes it all rusty as you can as you can see it's it's pretty pretty disgusting down here um, that's uh, that's definitely seen some better days so yeah um, it is what it is um, I've still got to get it out so um, what I'll do, I'll be using a breaker bar for this, it's a 22mm bolt, and get that on there, get my breaker bar on, let me uh, 
right orientation. And there we go, right. So what I'm going to do, give it a good... And the true break of our fashion, what happens is the best orientation you can get it on is really, really awkward. Right, there we go. We can get it on there now. And lever it off. And there we go. So got a feeling because this is really stiff and quite rusty and this is going to take a while so I might have to cut out all the way out as far as I can with the breaker bar before I'll even be able to use a ratchet on it so I'll see you in a sec okay right that uh, the bottom bolt there is now is now uh, pretty much all the way out what I've done is I've just loosely refitted it because I do want to have the the shock at the bottom just to hold all this together whilst i undo these two bolts here on the uh on the arms um the uh, the bolt at the bottom of the shock was a right pain it literally came out pretty much all the way with the breaker bar it was really really tight um, and very very rusty um, as you can see here this is all the rust on this arm and this is the reason why we're replacing this you know what i mean this is uh, this is the reason why it was picked up on an mot um, it's absolutely caked in rust um, but yeah we will it should be good once we've uh, got the yellow ones on right next um, this top arm is a 19 mil bolt and again we have the breaker bar just crack it off that's actually not too bad that feels like it'll come out with the ratchet the bottom one isn't the same size the bottom one is an 18 Again, I'm getting the breaker bar on it. Now these are the eccentric ones. Um, obviously, once you crack these off, you are affecting the geometry just the same as you are when you break the three bolts off on the front. Um, the 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 steering geometry on this car, or should I say, the uh, wheel alignment on the rear, has been affected. So um, if you are going to do this, just remember that you will need to factor in a wheel alignment um, as part of this. So that one came undone quite nicely and I'm pretty sure I can get that off with a ratchet now. So let me get them out and then we'll be ready to get this arm off. Okay, so there we are. That's the top and bottom bolt. And what I've done, I've just left them in so that they're sat inside the bush. So everything's not just going to fall. Likewise, the uh, the one at the bottom of the shock is just sat inside, uh, so that it's um, holding the weight of the arm. Now, all I've got at the front here is just one more bolt to remove, and then the front of the arm will be loose. And there we go. And there's the last bolt. Put it down with the others, and there you go. As you can see, we're uh, we're all loose. Now, um, ABS sensor, just pop it out of its housing there. And also it, it does fit onto the shock absorber. Just there like that. And there we go. So that's now loose. And now all we need to do is remove these three bolts and everything will come out so if I just pop the bolt at the bottom of the shock out there it is as you can see everything now lowering down take that one out and lastly come on there we go that one and there we are that is everything removed from the car now the brake hose is in the way of the abs sensor cable there we go that's that and there we go 
Oh, there we go. That was a bit of an epic. A lot of uh, a lot of stuff to remove, but here you can see the reason why this was failed. Uh, you know, pick, not failed. Picked up as an MOT advisory, and you can see that the steel is just delaminated, and it's not looking too clever at all, really. So, yeah, we're uh, we're going to be doing good for the car. You know, to replace these with uh, with the alloy ones. So. There we go. Right, guys. Um, I think what I'll do is I'll leave this episode here, um, and we'll do uh, we'll do another episode with the refitment of the new one. Um, but uh, yeah, this is this has gone on quite a while because it was quite an epic. So yeah, ho hopefully you uh, you know you, you enjoyed this video. Uh, if you did, then uh, obviously give give it a give it a thumbs up. Feel free to leave a comment down below. Um, uh, again, go and watch the uh, the previous episode where we replaced the wheel bearing and the front bush on the on the uh, on the replacement arms. Um, uh, to see where we you know where we get with this. <laughs> it's copper grease all over that. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can see where how we got to where we uh, where we are now. Uh, and yeah, and I'll uh, I'll see you all again for the next episode where we uh, we'll get the new one fitted onto the car. So yeah, thank you very much, guys, for stopping by. And I'll see you all again soon. Take care. Bye bye now.